Well, good morning, and he is risen in, and risen indeed. What a wonderful thing to be able to celebrate today, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was crucified, dead and buried, is alive today, forever. We celebrate that. Wow, what a great time. And I'm standing in my backyard here, uh, same place I stood the other day. Only person I had to talk to, <laughs> to preach to was Toby, my great Dane, he's just walked off. But hey, with the, the risen Christ, it's all good. It's all good. Let me read something to you that uh, really impacted me. He was born in an obscure village and worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. He then became an itinerant preacher. He never held an office. He never had a family or owned a house. He didn't go to college. He had no credentials but himself. All the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments that ever sat, and all the kings that ever reigned have not affected the life of man on this earth as much as he. Nineteen, twenty centuries have come and gone. And today he is the central figure of the human race, Jesus Christ. This is the one that we, we're speaking of today. And I'd like to say to you as we come through this season, this coronavirus lockdown season, and we should have been at Easter camp today, hey? those from Fountain. We appreciate that. This is the day we would have been on that rugby field celebrating together uh, the risen Christ. So we do that together by cyber, by social media today. I uh, trust that this will be an amazing day for you. Let's read from Matthew 28, the, the passage in Matthew's Gospel. And incidentally, it seemed like God was so excited to bring on the, the resurrection that on the, the day of Jesus' crucifixion on Good Friday, when he died, it says the tombs of many were open in Matthew 27. Tombs of many were open and they were seen walking around. God was so excited to bring on the resurrection. And that's what uh, we are celebrating today. So after the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning. And his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became dead like, like men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead, and he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy. Isn't that a wonderful combination, the fear and the joy? A little bit like many are feeling at this season, huh? Afraid yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. And they came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to him, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. And then uh, there's that report about the gods who try to spell, spread lies about his resurrection. And then in verse 16, 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. As again, he's like us, eh? They worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came back to them and he said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you, always to the very end of the age. His resurrection is the impetus, the springboard for the launch into all the world, our Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and uttermost parts. This is the springboard. This is where it all comes together. This is an amazing, wonderful thing to be celebrating today. It's a unique thing. The tombs were broken open. And uh, Jesus was for us the first fruit. He began to, to walk in a resurrected way. Uh, and for, for the next 40 days uh, on his, with his life on earth, went about teaching his disciples about these things, about the kingdom life and how to live it. But I love that, that greeting that he used when he, he greeted the, the Marys. He said, Chi rete, joy, rejoice. Joy is surely the primary motive and emotion that should bubble forth from us when we know the significance of his resurrected life. 
Let's just say there needs to be clearly understood that it was a physical resurrection. He actually rose again. He said to, to Thomas, touch me, feel me, put your hand in my, in my side, in my, your fingers in my holes, in my hands. The, and, and they ate fish together. Jesus uh, had that fish fry on the beach with, as he restored Peter from his, his sense of failure and betrayal. So for him, so for us, a physical resurrection awaits us. What happened to him, what happened to you and me, we, we are destined to have, because of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, a resurrection experience, uh, not dissimilar to his, a complete breakthrough uh, where we'll be physically transformed as well as celebrating as an emotional experience of joy that is beyond words. Of course, we also recognize each other, much like uh, Moses and Elijah were recognized on the Mount of Transfiguration. But let's go back. The, uh, the, there are those that would argue about uh, the resurrection and whether it was really valid and, and uh, is this uh, the most important thing for us to hold on to? Isn't just a lie? Well, there was a brilliant philosophy lecturer at the London University presenting a, a radio program and um, he was asked this question. If you could meet any person from the past, any person from the past, and ask them just one question, who would you meet? And what would that question be? And this professor answered without hesitation, I would meet Jesus Christ and ask him the most important question in the world, did you or did you not rise from the dead? This changes everything. This changes everything. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, the most important uh, statement that the world would ever hear he is risen risen indeed in fact that's a, a cry that we issue forth on this day over and over again in our churches the evidence for his resurrection is 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 is, is abounding we have the the empty tomb we know that his tomb was empty and they've tried to explain that away maybe saying the woman went to the wrong tomb uh this is unlikely uh there were it was really light when they went there uh they watched the burial so they'd be in there. Peter and John wouldn't have made the same mistake. And surely Joseph Arimathea, who owned the tomb, would have corrected them. So it wasn't a, a wrong tomb. There are those that say that Jesus didn't die but fainted. Well, the centurion who watched the soldier pierce him declared him dead. And uh, not likely after the rigors of what he'd been through in the Passion uh, and the Crucifixion that he would have survived another 36 hours in a stone tomb without food or any support and tending of his wounds. There are those that would say the tomb was empty because thieves stole his body. Well, what would be their motive? And if it, if it had been stolen, wouldn't they have produced his body as proof when the disciples started to claim his resurrection? Couldn't they have done that? Why didn't they? Well, they didn't, his body was not stolen. There are those that say the disciples stole his body. Well, that's a rumor that the Jews actually spread around that time. But uh, the truth is, in fact, we also, Matthew, uh, we're told that the, the, the guards were given a similar message uh, to, to put out there that his body was stolen. But um, they would have produced the body. And the disciples surely wouldn't have given their lives for a lie and uh, encouraged hundreds and thousands in the years to come to do the same. Would they be prepared to be flogged, go to prison and die for an empty lie? So the tomb was empty. That's the number one reality that we celebrate today. Also, his grave clothes were undisturbed, which tells you it was a miraculous uprising, a miraculous resurrection. <clears throat> uh, his, his clothes, his grave clothes were, were laden with, with cloths and spices weighing about 100, 100 pounds and uh, sprinkled in, in the folds, as John 19 tells us. Um, and, and his head cloth was separated from the rest of his, his, clo his, his burial clothing. And uh, if this was... Uh, if this was uh, some kind of physical thing that uh, had been manipulated, then it wouldn't have been quite like that. And uh, he, he was supernaturally res resurrected from those very grave clothes. In, there are those that would say that the Lord, uh, was he really resurrected? How do we know? Well, hundreds and hundreds of people witnessed his resurrection life. And this was a testimony that inspired many, many, many people. This transformed the world. This resurrection of Christ. Um, many tried to to uh, to explain this as a um, as a, a myth of the Christian Church. Well, 
if this really was, would so many people over so many centuries have believed it and seen their lives transformed supernaturally? The truth is, the resurrection of Christ was, a, was evidenced by the transformation of the lives of these ordinary Galilean people, timid, fearful people, unlearned, who became courageous, emboldened witnesses of a gospel, a good news message that has gone out into all the world and is going out again in this day, in our time. We are celebrating the uh, impact, the, the reset of the cross and the relaunch through the resurrection. And we celebrate a relaunch and we're about to get into more of that as we, as we uh, come through this coronavirus season, this lockdown season. And uh, the evidence for his resurrection is powerful and, and convincing. Uh, well, what does it mean for you and for me? Well, it certainly impacts the way we live and uh, can live. For example, we, uh, we now walk by faith. We don't have his physical body with us, but we, he says, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. And we have, a, we have a promise from him that by his spirit, he would presence himself with us. So we walk by faith and not by sight. That's one implication of his resurrection. And by the way, we are passionate in this faith. Paul says in Philippians 3.10, uh, I press on for this one thing, to lay hold of that I may know Him, know Him and the, and the fellowship of His sufferings. And He says, I, I want to lay hold of Him and f for, of all of that for which He laid hold of me. A laying hold, a laying hold is what the resurrection invites us to. And we lay hold by faith. We reach for all that we could be by faith. Then John says that if we have this hope in us, we purify ourselves. 1 John 3 verse 2. So we would live by faith and by a passion for purity. We will no longer uh, be complacent about brokenness in our lives. We'll press in to become whole and let our journey to wholeness be an expression of our worship of the Lord, of His goodness toward us. Also, Hebrews 12 tells us that Jesus is the pioneer and the perfecter, the author and the finisher of this life of obedience to the Father and of our faith. And like Him, who set before him the joy, and his eyes were on the joy set before him, so he could despise the, the cross and the shame, and reach for that which came from obedience to the Father, the joy of the Father's delight. Much like, uh, much like Job did, when he was encouraged to just curse God and die, and, and succumb to all the, the uh, adversity that he'd encountered in his life. And Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And he also said in Job 19.25, that I know that my Redeemer lives and He will walk on the heights. I will see Him again with my own eyes. I will see Him, said Job. So we, we, we because of the res resurrection of Jesus, <laughs> I get so excited about this. Because of His resurrection, we walk by faith. We, uh, we walk by purity. We, we don't want to stay the same. We want to be transformed, allowing the good news to transform us. And we walk by joy. We have a joy set before us as Jesus had. The joy of the Father's delight and the Father's pleasure. And then fourthly, and this is an important one in a time such as this, in this lockdown recovery season, we walk by resilience. What can separate us from the love of, of God that is shown in Christ? Nothing, neither height nor depth, life nor death. Nothing can separate us from His, from his love. There is a resilience in us. So much so that in verse 28 of that chapter that I'm referring to, Romans Romans chapter, chapter 8, verse 28. We know that in all things, even what we're experiencing globally in COVID-19, what we're experiencing in the, in the economic unrest, and what we're experiencing in all the attendant factors that uh, accompany this adversity, we have a resilience. As my brother always says, you can't keep a good man down. And uh, he sings that Larry Norman song. By resilience. There's a resilience in us. That will not let go. Because we know the one whom we love, the one whom we follow, has been resurrected. And because of his resurrection, we have a hope and a future that the world does not really understand. So, you know, the um, Bolshevik Re Revolution in Russia in 1917 had a, uh, a lot of things attendant to it. And there was a communist lecturer who was delivering this message to a captive audience. And... Um, the people were forced to be there, in other words. At the end of the message, uh, as he was denouncing the reality of the Christian faith and the resurrection of Christ, denouncing that that was his message. 
at the end of this message, a, a Christian pastor stood up and said, Sir, I would like to make a reply. If you are so sure of your position, you will give me time to reply. The communist lecturer was stunned by this challenge and, uh, and said, Okay, I'll give you five minutes. The Christian pastor said, I don't need five minutes. I ask just for five seconds. And in five seconds I'll prove the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The standard lecturer, communist lecturer said, Can you present an argument for the resurrection of, of Christ in five seconds? Is this for real? Yes, I can, was the confident reply, at which the pastor stood to his feet and gave in Greek the traditional Easter greeting. Translated, it says, The Lord is risen. As one man, the entire auditorium, thundered and erupted back, He is risen indeed. <clears throat> I want to say to you, and to all around us, in the face of such an affirmation of Christian experience, there is no argument against the resurrection. When the resurrection power and reality of Jesus moves into the hearts of human beings who know Him as a glorious reality, there is no argument to defeat it. Because Christ is risen, we live. Because our Savior lives, we live. We know He holds the future for us individually and as churches and in our nations and around the world. I am so excited about the anticipation of this relaunch of a fresh new humanity. Jesus is the, the first one, the first fruits, and we in Him come into a new life in Christ. God has a plan for us and through us for the world around us. This is a new day for the church. This is a new day for humanity as the hope of Jesus is, is relaunched. Resurrection Sunday, we celebrate that today. May God stir up a fresh resolve in all of our hearts that we might love Him, walk closely with Him, and pursue Him with our hearts set on the eternity with Him. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Father, thank You for this day, which is the day we celebrate the foundation of our hope. If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. But because of your resurrection, we have a hope that the world cannot give and cannot take away. It brings a peace that passes understanding. Thank you, Father, for that. Thank you, Jesus, for the reality of this Holy Spirit. Would you burn this into our hearts and help us open our eyes that we might see it and be transformed by the power of your resurrection. Not only now, but forever. And may what you do in us be good for others. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.